Hello everyone, so today we will see how to create this type of effect using Typeflow from 3ds Max and the Surface Force property. We will use a noise texture which applied to our mesh will be the force which will deform the movement of our particles. The spline effect with curl is obviously animable as you can see, which allow once the rendering is created to have a nice spline evolution. To start, we will already see how the surface force works and how apply it to particles with physics. Okay, so we are in 3ds Max. For this example, I'm going to use a sphere, but you can use any surface or mesh. I select uh, Typhlow Setup and I just create a both. 0, 0 and 300 particles. I now add a position object and I select the sphere. We can see that uh, the particles are created in my sphere. I will now add a shape and select sphere and change the scale and variation. Okay, now the particle sphere are visible. So I will now add the surface force to bring life to these particles. And select my sphere. As you can see, we already have a force which is applied, but we don't want it, so we put it to zero. Our change can be made here in the texture option. So I open my texture editor and I will create a simple noise map. Don't forget to select explicit channel map. If you forget that, the effect will not work. I therefore just uh, decrease the size of my noise map. 0 0.2, I think. Okay. And now we can see the texture rules the black and white. I now select the map and I drag and drop it in the location. I will now change this value here. There are some values that I use personally to have the best effect. Nothing changed because the value of the force has not changed. We therefore go to gradient trace and put a force of uh, 0 0.25, I think. Okay. Now we see that uh, we have a force that is applied, but uh, the problem is that it's not stuck to the sphere. So we are going to create an object bind. Select the sphere, lock to surface, and no friction. Okay. And as you can see, the effect uh, starts to be very interesting. But it's a little too fast, so I'm going to slow it down with a slow option and put a value of uh, 40. And it's already more interesting. I just increase the scale. The effect is starting to look cool, but uh, the problem, as you can see, is that uh, there is no physics in the simulation. To correct this, so we are going to create a particle physics operator and select shape radius. OK. I will increase now again the number of particles and start to really give a very interesting effect. The force affects all our particles. Another interesting thing to do is to activate enable particle attraction, which would force the particle to create cluster and to add strength in the animation. We see that the particles are attracted to each other. I can still increase the number of particles. What I can also do is to modify the size of the noise map to have different effects. Okay, so this is basically the method to applying a surface force and playing with the texture to influence the movement of the particles. Now we will see how to create the effect we saw at the beginning. There are only small things to change. So we can delete particle physics, object bind, and shape. Okay, we don't need it now. What we are going to do is to add a spline path and select create new. We see that the wanted effect start to be created. 
we can still modify the size in the noise map, which will modify the pattern of uh, our spline. I am now going to tie spline and I just decrease the side to preserve my RAM and I also reduce uh, the thickness to have a nicer effect. Okay, good. The results start to be very satisfying, but uh, what we can do now is to add a little more volume in the spline with a spread effect. So, spread. I put all the value to zero and I just increase the value in the Z axis. Two will be good, I think. And now, as you can see, we have a little volume between uh, our spline, which, once animated, will give an even better effect. Okay, you all have in your hand to create this kind of very cool effect. All you have to do now is creating your camera, texture, light, and launching your rendering. Okay, guys, that's all for this tutorial. I hope it was useful to you. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and like if you like my work. I will see you soon for another cool project. Bye.